Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet, and I turn this tutorial. I'll be showing you an easy way of how you can easily always retain skin texture and avoid having plastic like looking images when it comes to skin retouching and frequency separation in general. So, if I told you how to analyze this very image, let me show you what I'm trying to mean. If I told you, look at this image, it is an edited image, but it still has. The textures left intact and they're not tampered with so you can see this and this is what i want to demonstrate for you and enable you or help you always get natural and realistic skin textures in your images so what i'll do basically i'll just come and i'll simply delete this so the most important step is uh when it comes to frequency separation is you have to understand and master the Gaussian blur radius when it comes to retaining skin textures. So let me first of all create these layers for you for frequency separation. So I just create these two layers, then name this to low and name this to high. So usually when you play the action for frequency separation, it stops at the point where you have to put in the values for the Gaussian blur radius. So I'll select the low frequency layer right here. Then I'll simply come to filter. Then I'll come to blend. I'll just come to Gaussian blur. So like I said, it usually stops at this point whereby you have to determine the amount of Gaussian blur to apply to your image. So you click on the skin area and take the radius all the way down to 0 0.1. So take it all the way down. So when you analyze this image, most skin textures are around this area. So what you have to do, and this is the most important step when it comes to skin retouching and frequency separation in general. So when you come to the radius slider and simply left click on it, and we start dragging up the radius slider, you can notice, so you left click and start dragging as you're releasing it to see the effect in real time. So left click and drag just like that. So the trick here is you have to stop at the point whereby you can still identify the skin textures but you stop at the point whereby you are just starting to lose out on the details but you can still identify where the details were. You don't completely lose them out by moving the slider all the way up. No, what you have to do basically, you just have to drag it gradually up to a point when you're just starting to lose out on the details up to a point when the details are just starting to disappear so for this case you can set around seven pixels that is when i'm just starting to lose out on these skin details or skin textures so that is where i'll just stop so I'll just hit okay so the details that we lose out on this step are the details we are going to remain with in the finally or the final retouched image Remember, the lower the radius, the more plastic it is going to be when it comes to the skin details. And the higher the Gaussian blur radius, the more details you're going to be remaining with. So, so you have to be careful with this step and you look for that nice and sweet spot. So always analyze the details in the images as you're moving that radius slider. It is the most important step when it comes to retaining skin details in your images so I'll just come and activate the high frequency line and turn it on so if at all you understand frequency separation so usually we come to image apply image then we simply select the low frequency layer and for my case it is a 16-bit image I'll use a scale of 20 offset zero and turn on the invert option and if I told you working with an 8-bit image basically you turn this to subtract then type in the scale of 2 and offset 128 and you don't turn on the invert option and you have the same result. So mine is add and I'll simply turn on the invert option. So usually we turn this to linear light and we put this to in a group. Control G or you can use command G on the keyboard put this to in a group. So usually after doing that, we open up this and we start working on the skin tones or even out on the transitions within the skin tones. So, 
So what I would always recommend, always turn off the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. And you come and get the mixer brush tool and set it the right way. So make sure it is a clean brush. Make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is selected. The weight I prefer to use is 9%, load 75, mix 90 and flow 100%. And make sure sample orders is not turned on. So with the mixer brush tool selected, you can increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So the open and close brackets on the keyboard are going to increase or reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool. And how to apply it, you simply left click and hold down and you brush colors to blend them. So when you are using this kind of technique of hiding the high frequency layer, oftentimes is when you are mixing the skin, it tends to make the image look plastic. But the advantage of hiding this high frequency layer is because we don't want to be distracted by the skin textures and we only want to deal with the color. So mix colors alone. So you mix the highlight alone and how to mix you left click and hold down and you blend the colors so that you can create a nice and smooth transition between those colors. So to, reduce, to work on a smaller area, reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys and mix that color alone. And while this highlight is transitioning from one color to another, reduce on the size and work on that color using a small sized brush. So right now this is what we have. So or also come to the neck area and mix that color alone. Mix the darkest color of the neck and just like that. So you can see as we're doing this, the image is going to look a little bit plastic. But after the process, I'll show you the result. So when you come back and return on the high frequency layer, which contains the textures. So when I come and I turn it back on, you can see textures are still left intact in this image. And when I show you the overall before and after, you can see that the image looks as natural as possible. And we haven't tampered with the skin details. And the skin texture is nice and highly realistic. So after doing that, the next thing you can proceed to do is removing the blemishes by selecting the high frequency layer and cleaning up the blemishes. So you hold that, you select the clone stamp tool and set it mode normal past and at 100% and flat 100% sample to current layer and simply hold down the option key on the keyboard or the alternate key on the keyboard left click on an area that is near the blemish and simply left click over the blemish to clean it up or remove the blemish from uh, that very area so that is how you can simply remove the blemishes and take your time as you are removing blemishes so that you can have the best out of your frequency separation. So this is how you can easily retain highly and natural and realistic skin textures in your images using frequency separation. And if at all you have enjoyed this video, simply like this video. And don't forget to subscribe if at all you are watching and you're not subscribed to this channel. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and see you in yet more videos on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.